welcome back to Anderson County Serves Here. I am happy to be with you today, Carol Burdett, United Way CEO. And as we've been working through many of these different segments, it just so happened that week before last, I was in Charleston and was honored with the Murray L. Vinson Award. And you may be wondering, what in the world is that? Well, the reason I was given the award has much to do with what United Way has done in the area of teen pregnancy prevention. You see, about 20 years ago, we determined that was an issue that we needed to tackle. We had developed a women in philanthropy group and they looked at many issues in the community. It seemed that many of them were stemmed from young girls having children they were not financially or emotionally prepared to take care of. So we began looking at how do we make a difference? Because if we can reduce teen pregnancy, we can reduce poverty in our community. From that point, we began to look at what was the weakest link? Where was the greatest need for us to be able to talk to youth, how do we get them to delay the sexual activity in their life, being more responsible for the time that they would encounter that type of activity? In doing so, we realized it really needed to start in the schools. And we had very few parents that have ever pulled their children out of our programs or opted out from the very beginning. It has been highly successful. I can't wait for you to meet some of the people that are really more deserving of this award than I am. They've done the work. They've worked with our students. And in fact, we started our program in School District 3. We went to School District 4, and then we received a federal grant that allowed us to have our evidence-based curriculum taught in all five school districts. Do you know how we know that it's been successful? Because the number of teen births are tracked and we have seen over a 70% decrease in teen births in Anderson, South Carolina. Now I know that some people accuse United Way of funding abortion. I want to tell you today that is false information. We do not in any way fund abortion. What we have funded is evidence-based work within our schools to inform our children of how to be more responsible and delay the actions that may cause them to be in a place where they're not physically, emotionally, or financially ready to raise a child. We want the best for our youth in Anderson County. We want them to thrive. And we know that through the program that we have been using in Anderson County schools for 20 years has been very successful. When we first started in School District 3, I have to say I was a little nervous. What, were, what was going to happen? When we went to our first school board meeting after the program had started, I was afraid of the flood of parents that might come in. But no, it was not a flood of parents against the program. All we received were kudos about the great work that Kristen Fouts was doing. And you're gonna to get to meet her. She's an amazing young health educator that has been doing this work for nearly 20 years. You're gonna meet other people that have been involved in the program and they have either been fundraisers or they have been in the front lines with our youth. I'd like to introduce you to Kristen Fouts. Kristen graduated from Clemson University with a degree in health education. She has been working in School District 3 her entire career in health education. In 2009, she was featured in Time Magazine because our program was so successful, we continued to get national attention from Time Magazine, from newspapers outside of our state, and through United Way Worldwide. 
I um, was called by United Way by Jamie and Kristen to um, apply. They said that I came highly recommended from District 1 and they had a position and opening in District 4 for a teen pregnancy uh, prevention um, coordinator and they said I had came highly recommended so I applied and then um, I was actually like nine months pregnant when I applied. <laughs> They were so nice, uh, nice to me. So I applied um, through United Way, and then I had an interview with uh, Dr. McDavid at Anderson School District 4, and I accepted the position to become their teen pregnancy prevention coordinator for District 4. It's, you know, the word speaks for itself, impact, and that's what we call it, because we truly, as um, comprehensive health or um, teen pregnancy prevention coordinates, we make an impact in the lives of the children so that they make healthy choices. So we teach them about their body and how it works so that they know how to handle situations. So we start from sixth grade and we go all the way up till 12th grade. Um, the sixth grade curriculum teaching them how to say no, but not only how to say no, but how to say it effectively so that when they do get older and they may have situations where they need to say no to protect them, to make healthy um, sexual decisions, it builds on that. And so it has impacted a lot, especially in my district. So we went from a district where we were seeing a lot of increase in teen pregnancy to I think one year we were down to just none and I think we just had, had one. So those numbers have significantly decreased because of the impact that we make in the lives of these students. So I develop a pretty good rapport with my students um, at first. Um, I'm a little tough going just so that they know that this is serious because we're talking about lives. So there is an at-risk program that I do with the eighth graders at the middle school. And so we're able to kind of get a little bit more personal. And so there were some of the ladies in there who said, Ms. Johnson, you know, you really have made an impact in my life because I'm able to talk to someone about these real situations because I don't have anyone at home to talk to and someone to be there and actually follow these students to where they call me um, my personal phone and be like, Ms. Johnson, I have this situation I need to talk to you about and they know that I'm going to give them not only the correct but honest and, th and situations that they may occur or they may have in their life, I'm going to be honest and tell them, hey, this is what really could happen. So you want to make sure you make positive decisions. So it's good to have that rapport with the students that I come across. And then when I see them in high school, the relationship is different. They know that, hey, that's Miss Johnson. She cares about us. She makes a difference in our lives. So the United Way uh, came to New Foundations. They approached us and asked us if we wanted to join in on this grant opportunity that they had to provide teen pregnancy prevention to our youth at New Foundations Home for Children. So we were excited about it and we joined on. For us at New Foundations, we're kind of a small nonprofit organization. We have about 55 youth that are, we serve from all over the state of South Carolina. And they currently live there with us. It's a residential program. So by us being able to join this grant, we were able to have funding, extra funding that we don't typically have as a nonprofit. We were able to go to trainings and we had a team of three facilitators that um, presented the grant groups to our youth at New Foundations. So we went on all these trips and we got all this training and we came back and we used uh, Making Proud Choices for Out of Home Youth was the curricula that we used and it was the first in the state to address teens that are in an out of home placement, so foster care or uh, juvenile justice placement and that's what we currently are. So we, it's a 10 week program and each session is about 75 minutes. Even after the grant um, ended, we continue to do the program with our youth because we just feel like it's so, it's so important, it's such good information, and we see a big difference in the confidence in our kids and the, the knowledge that they have when they leave us. It does address abstinence, and that's obviously the, you know, the most effective form of uh, birth control. We do we do stress that we do talk about it, but we also talk about um, condom use and the importance of using a condom and the and the protection against STIs and STDs. We talk about other long-acting uh, birth control methods. We we talk about it all, and that's one of the great things about 
being at such a small organization that we are able to talk about the things that the school districts cannot talk about. They did the same thing at um, the Anderson County Alternative School. It's now called Renaissance Academy. But at the time when I was there, it was the Anderson County Alternative School. So they approached the school um, with a funding opportunity and an opportunity to talk about adolescent sexual health. And uh, same thing, we jumped on board. It was a five-year grant. The former grant was a five-year grant. And I joined the grant on year two. So um, I was able to get trained in a curriculum for middle school and for high school students. At the, at the former alternative school in Anderson County, it serves grades six through 12. Um, and it serves all five school districts in Anderson. So the five school districts are feeder schools into the alternative school. So the kids are there often because they are either um, expelled or placed there uh, for various issues. Some of them may be um, violent issues. Some of them may be truancy. It may uh, not have even gotten that far and, and either you know parents or staff decided it may be best to place the student here to have an intervention and have a smaller group of staff to work with them, it may be in their best interest to do that. So they are there for a variety of reasons, um, but usually one commonality that we saw was that they had also missed a lot of school, like Katrina was talking about with the students at New Foundations, the ones at the alternative school had often missed a lot of school. Even if they attended regularly, the process to get them from their regular school into the alternative school took time, and that was time they were out of the classroom. And if they happen to be doing their reproductive health curriculum during that time, they missed it entirely. And sometimes we had students who came back year after year. They would be returned to their home school with the opportunity to start over, start fresh, and sometimes they would end up coming back. So there was a likelihood, a strong likelihood, that they may go through several years of school and never get the reproductive health curriculum because they were out for behavior reasons or other reasons. Um, so that was the most beneficial reason that we felt like we needed to do it at the alternative school because we were finally able to provide these kids with you know, reproductive health education um, and a steady opportunity to work with them where they may not have gotten that at all. And the benefit of doing a middle school and a high school curriculum was if they were those students who returned to us year after year, they would still get the same curriculum and they would not miss anything. They would still get the whole whole approach, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, and then 9th through 12th. As my role as a behavioral health counselor, you know, like I said, I would do assessments, I would talk with the students at length, so I generally had a good rapport with the students regardless because it was the nature of my job. Um, but whenever we started doing this grant, I did notice a shift in those relationships. You know, kids tend to uh, sometimes have reservations about what they're going to talk to you about because you're a staff member or you're an adult. And in a lot of what we talk about in the, the trainings for sex ed is being a trusted adult, being somebody that they feel like they can come to and talk to. And what we need to do as that staff member or trusted adult to earn that, the trust from them and to you know, make them feel comfortable having those conversations with us. So as the counselor, I noticed the kids would come to me a lot more frequently about mostly relationships um, and, you know, he or she is treating me this way, or this is happening, he, he or she doesn't really want me to talk to my friends anymore, what should I do? Or he or she is going through my phone, um, they're pressuring me to have sex, they're smoking weed, they're drinking, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to respond. And the beauty of the evidence-based curriculum that we use is it does talk about risk and involved, intertwined in risk is inhibitions being lowered from alcohol and drug use. Uh, peer pressure, you know, those to, and, and just your surroundings, like what you have available in your county to do, what you have access to. And so we talked a lot, a lot, a lot more conversations were centered around what was really going on with them in their lives and their relationships with people. And, um, you know, they would come to me too and say, you know, Miss Moore, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to have some time where I'm at home this weekend by myself and we're going to have some friends over and how would I get condoms? And, you know, and so you have to really be careful how you have those conversations as a school employee. You, you just can't give them the bottom line a lot of times, um, but you can provide them with resources to get that information if you can't give it to them in the school. And that was another benefit of the grant is as a community, the people who work with these adolescents in Anderson County were able to come together and have personal relationships. So. I could call the other ladies on the grant and say, hey, I have this kid, this is the situation, you know, they're coming back to your school or they're in your community. How, should, how do I refer them somewhere? How do they access, you know, reproductive health services 
in Iva. Um, so those, those were some of the benefits that came out of it is we were able to have the real conversations and, and we were able to work with each other um, as a community to figure out how to best serve these adolescents. So a lot of times they're in that moment, you know, in a private space with another person trying to decide, one, if they're going to have sex or not, two, if they're going to use protection or not, three, do they really even want to do this? Um, they're usually in that moment before they think about it. And one of the things that we, we saw as a benefit from the curriculum is it talks about those situations in the curriculum. It is built into it. And it has exercises for you to think through and even role play and practice what you would do. And so, you know, you would see kids, kids are sometimes uncomfortable acting that out, but they're going to be uncomfortable in real life too. So that's the, that's the pro. And so you would see them like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. And I'm like, all right, well, what would you really say if you were in this situation? Currently, I'm a community health worker at United Way of Anderson County, uh, working on a grant regarding sexual health in adolescents. Uh, the way we do the grant is it's called Plan A. It's for adolescents ages 15 to 19. The focus is on females, but we also do complete the program with males. Uh, one of the first things they do is we have a conversation the beauty of this program is it can be done virtually or in person, but they do a questionnaire called RAPS and it's a risk assessment questionnaire. So it lets us know um, things such as have they engaged in sexual activity in the last six months? Uh, do they plan on it in the next six months? Um, have they used birth control? Um, have they used alcohol or drugs? Have they felt suicidal? Um, you know, so it really is a thorough comprehensive risk assessment. And based off of their answers to that, it either closes there and sends me their results or it kicks them to another assessment if they're deemed in the higher risk or, or if they check off some, some boxes that are more concerning. Um, and so based off of whatever those results are, then I can connect them with resources in the community to address those issues. I'm JB Nemo and I'm an employee of the United Way for almost 18 years. And um, in the beginning, I was uh, part of the group of women here at the office that helped recruit women in the community to support our vision. And they really agreed with what we wanted to do, and um, they really took that vision and, and ran with it. They were great supporters and hard workers and um, helped us identify schools, programs that we wanted to get into, and uh, other women to help support it, but we really needed to raise the money to get it to, to be able to go to the schools and offer it to them. When we got in all the schools, all the middle schools in Anderson County, um, they couldn't have been prouder, and they were so so happy to be part of it. One of our volunteers and members of our longtime member of our Women's Leadership Council said to me one day that this was the most meaningful um, program or community involvement that she had ever experienced and that really meant a lot to us. When we first started, when we first recruited these women in the community, we had meetings to identify issues in the community. We didn't know where we were going with this. We just knew we wanted a group of women to come to together and to make a difference in the community on some, some of the issues that we have. Neg and I'm talking about negative issues. We talk about poverty, homelessness, child abuse, unwanted pregnancies. I mean, the list goes on and on. But these women got together and they realized that all of these issues that they were bringing up were the after effects of what was the root problem, what was the root cause of these issues. And one of the things on the list was teen pregnancy, and they went right for it. They said, this makes sense. Teen pregnancy is one of the... Um, uh, causes for all of these other things that are happening to these people so um, to, to our community and we ran with that it was it was fantastic because they understood it and we kept going for years then we kept going back to the root of the problem what's the root of the problem we're not putting a band-aid on it anymore we're gonna go to see what is it that's causing all of these issues and let's get to that and take care of it okay, sure. you've heard a lot about teen pregnancy prevention the real deal is we noted there was a problem. There was a problem of too many girls having babies they weren't ready for. You see, when we first started down this road and we realized that schools were our weakest link, it was the place that the 
Council of Teen Pregnancy Prevention could not seem to get in, but we had a group of women that were influential, and they decided that this was going to be their issue. They were going to fund it, and they were going to be involved. There were 12 women, and these 12 women took this seriously. Seriously enough that several of them made appointments to all five school superintendents in Anderson County. And they said to them, if we can fund a health educator who can facilitate evidence-based curriculum with your students for five years and it will not cost you anything, would you agree to it? Amazingly or not, only two districts said yes, School District 3 and School District 4. Thankfully, I had just moved from being a United Way volunteer to being the CEO here at United Way. And I was also the mayor of Pendleton in School District 4. Thankfully, the women chose School District 3 because then it didn't look like I had made some decision for them. That's how we got to School District 3, and that is how we ended up with Kristen. We must continue to work because it is not only the fact that we save taxpayers' money, that's great, but it's the fact that we save young women and young men who carry guilt. Many of them walk out on the girl that uh, is now pregnant with their child. They can live free from those issues and none of us want to see unwanted children born. That's why we keep doing this and why I hope United Way will always have teen pregnancy prevention as a priority. Um, I was actually hired right out of Clemson University um, by Impact, um, which was a nonprofit organization that focused on teen pregnancy prevention in Anderson County, um, and then was hired for the Impact program for Anderson School District 3 through Women's Leadership and United Way of Anderson County. It's, it's prepared um, these teenagers and young adults for decisions that they're going to have to make um, during their teenage years but also during their adult life and it's um, helped us have more productive members of society because we're reducing the rates of teen pregnancy so we have more teenagers ready getting education afterwards or going to get jobs and are able to contribute to the community um, and have babies when they want to and babies who are are planned and they're ready for instead of unintended pregnancies. Okay. It's been amazing working with the teens of Anderson County um, to see their lives impacted by the program and the relationships um, that we've built um, and lives truly changed and um, teenagers who uh, maybe would have fell in a, a cycle of teen pregnancy because we know when mothers have been teen parents that um, the daughters of those mothers are more likely to become teen parents themselves so to see um, those kids bring themselves out of that cycle and become productive members of society and to see them later and thriving is unbelievable. So I've been involved with Impact Teen Pregnancy Prevention United Way of Anderson County for 18 years um, and we've seen over a 75 percent reduction in teen pregnancy in the county of Anderson. We started with just Anderson School District 3 and now it's in all five districts which is unbelievable. So we were impacting a very small group um, in a very big way and now we're impacting the entire county of Anderson in an unbelievable way. So in 2009 um, United Way was contacted by Time Magazine about um, the program in Anderson School District 3 um, and it blew my mind. Uh, we are do, doing something in small little Anderson County, South Carolina that people all over the country were looking to um, having a program like this in a school. So we really kind of modeled it for the country, not just the county, not just the state for the entire country um, in, in the fact that we were doing um, abstinence plus education and really letting these kids understand decisions that they were going to have to make and what future could lie ahead of them. Um, it was shocking to be contacted by Time Magazine um, and really rewarding for United Way and our community um, and a testament to United Way and Women's Leadership Initiative to take on such a big, big topic and then Anderson School District 3, 
you know, one of the smallest districts um, to take on such a big issue, um, to be brave and to, to tackle what needs to be tackled and not be scared of it. Um, it was just a great experience.